susunod na magsasalita ay isang teknolohista or in English, a technologist. Now, when I was looking at his CV and reading about Dr. Greg Tangonan, I was asking myself, and I thought I was a geek. Hindi pala. There are more people who are geekier than I. Specifically, Dr. Greg here uh, finished, of course, with a Bachelor's of Science in Physics. He received his graduate training in Caltech, which is the nerd heaven in Southern California, a PhD in Applied Physics. He joined the Hughes Research Laboratories as technical staff, section head, department manager, principal research scientist, and then eventually laboratory director. He has made a lot of contributions in the fields of fiber optics, integrated optics, material science, radar subsystems, optical networks, wireless networks, RF switches, and antennas. Wow, bigat, di ba? Okay, he has received 49 US patents and has won awards for fiber optic security and optical networking components. He has left, of course, HRL Laboratories as Director of Research, come back home here to the Philippines where a number of students are benefiting from the numerous things he has to share with them. So, mga kaibigan, I'd like to introduce, it's my pleasure, to introduce to you our technologist for the night, Dr. Greg Tagonan. Okay, when I was uh, invited by, by Mark, Mark has been going to Ateneo attending my innovation class, and uh, we've been having a lot of good conversations about technology. So he asked me to come and speak. It, uh, it caused me to think, what would I really want to talk about? Given the premise of what we're talking about tonight, it has to be something pretty damn big, pretty darn interesting, really, pretty wild, okay? So I sat around and thought, thought about it. I could talk to you about what we're doing in, in Ateneo using the Wii. Some of my colleagues from Ateneo are here. We're having a lot of fun using the Wii, and maybe that's something I can talk about the, the next time, uh, in another time. Well, the physics of disasters. Disasters are very interesting. Um, our cell phones are connected to the power grid. When there's a typhoon, they shut down the power. How do the systems fail? How do they come back up? There's a lot of physics in there. There are things like using wireless, so we can get our, uh, our fruits and vegetables from uh, our, our mangoes uh, shipped all over the world, how to use wireless technology. Um, I have my own, also my own perspective. So, um, I teach this innovation class at Nathaneo, and uh, it's actually a very popular class because what we do, we begin with uh, no math, just bring to, to the class an idea about a certain technology. Why does the, what does the iPod really mean to you, okay? And is it really a big deal? Can we do some new things with some new technologies? So I, I have that perspective. I also have uh, the Filipino-American perspective. And so I, if you ask me, I have all kinds of interesting questions that, uh, that I ask all the time. My wife always uh, is right there, answers them for me, but she laughs at, at, the, at the way I think. But I decided to do something a lot more bold, something out of the ordinary, something out of my own space, and uh, reach out. Reach out and ask some questions. See that little boy? What's on his mind? What's the best way for him to learn? How do we all think and feel? Do we think like Americans? Hell no. Thank God. Okay. And are there some breakthroughs in technology that might help us understand these very, very deep questions? So being a technologist, I'm going to tell you a technology story that is, that is, that's evolving. It's not a fixed story. It's not a done deal. Okay. But it's probably one of the most important questions that we can ask. These are very deep questions. And you might be wondering, how is technology going to help us do this? All right? So what you'll see is, I'll show you a whole bunch of new technologies that are happening. And then I'll bring it back and deal with all of us. Okay? So let's begin with a, a technology survey. And we're going to now enter the, I guess, the, air, the arena of mind control, believe it or not. Okay. There's a fellow, Matt Nagel, 29 years old, 
a tetraplegic. This guy is really paralyzed. Okay? Almost every which way you could possibly think. What's interesting about this is after having implanted in his brain back here, you see up in the up in the middle, you see this. Uh, it looks like a little comb with with little teeth. It's about a hundred electrodes there. Okay, so it's uh, like hundred of electrodes, and then you stick it inside the brain, and you notice there's about a hundred wires coming out. Okay. And then they hook it up to a computer and they kind of look at all those signals that are coming to them. Now this, this, this uh, Matt Nagel, because of the work that they've been done at, at Brown University at, uh, and, and, and other places, and there's a company called Cyber, I can't get it right, Cyber Kinetics Neurotechnology Systems. He's able to, just thinking, to move a cursor. Um, and he can actually manipulate a moving arm, a uh, prosthetic arm. That's really wild. But fundamentally what's going on is that there are some electrodes inside there, a hundred electrodes, and they've got some kind of computer that looks at those signals and figures it out. Okay, here's another experiment. Let's call it the brain train. Here's a little girl. She's got about, about 25 uh, electrodes on her, on her head. This comes from Sony Corporation. Okay. Every one of those uh, 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 units has a little laser inside and then the light comes from the laser and hits her scalp and measures the blood flow locally in the scalp and then it just gets reflected. Okay. You see on the right a little map. All those little uh, electrodes uh, uh, give a signal and then we can make a map. What the little girl can do one, let's say she starts to re recite a poem. She has a certain map. What the people in Hindachi did was say, a certain map makes a train go to the right. Okay, if she does a math problem, the little, that map configuration makes the, the train go to the left. And there are other configurations of impact they can do. Okay, so they're com she's controlling this train. You might ask, I think we could play Spirit of the Game with this, no? Everybody get their electrodes and then the spirit of the game and eventually it would work, no? Well, my answer to that is yes, and probably a lot more. So if this works, you'll see a, a video from a company called NeuroSky. 